Good day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today I'm going to cover a quick tutorial in Dynamo um, to look at how we can align tags. So thanks for the idea um, to Alan C uh, off of LinkedIn. Uh, he's, he's actually in Australia working in Sydney as well. Haven't had a chance to meet him in person yet, but will shortly. Um, so thanks for the inspiration, and it was a fun little challenge to solve. I actually took some inspiration from a plugin that I used to use back in the day uh, from a company called BIM42, and they have an alignment tool. And essentially, it has a whole bunch of ways to align tags in an API. Um, obviously, I couldn't access the code of how this worked, uh, but Dynamo, I'm going to use to revisit this. And I'm going to use the distribute horizontally and vertically tools, which are the ones that I used to use the most back in the day. So essentially, we're going to do things like this. So try to line up tags either horizontally or vertically. Uh, but we're going to be using intersections in order to achieve this. So if, if you can imagine a line drawn infinitely from a source tag uh, in the vertical direction in this case, um, and we extrapolate a line horizontally from the tags that we're trying to align, essentially the intersection is where we can align those two. So we're going to use Dynamo to achieve this workflow. So we're going to not be using any custom nodes today just to create a workflow. And we'll ideally use something like 2.0.3. Um, something in the version 2 is ideal, but I think version 1 should support this workflow as well. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into Revit. So I've got a very messy floor plan here. A uh, whole bunch of rooms, tags. Ugh, uh, nothing lines up. Looks terrible. Um, looks like the average floor plan I tend to see in a Revit model. <laughs> so let's do a little bit of tidying up. And obviously I could go and move these around, put them into position, but it's quite slow. Imagine if I had, say, 300 of these to align instead. Um, obviously we want to find a more computational way to do this. So I'm just going to open up Dynamo here. And let's just say, as our test, we want to align these two tags horizontally with this tag here. So what I'm going to do to begin with is I'm going to use a select model elements node in order to pick our tag and our tags that we want to uh, align. So I'm going to select this as my central tag, and I'm just going to call this, uh, let's just call this align to this, to this tag. And likewise, I'll get another select model element. I'll just make that an input for Dynamo Player, cool. And let's just say align these tags. This is what the interface will tell you when you select um, all these tags in Dynamo Player, which we'll do at the end of this script. So ideally we want to make these two different tags. Um, it's really hard to select multiple elements using the select multiple elements tool without selecting the host as well that we're trying to align to, sorry, the tag we're trying to align to. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to use a select multiple elements tool first. I just realized I'm only using select model elements tool. So we want to use select model elements instead of select model element. This lets us marquee instead. I think, interesting. I'll just use select, select model elements, and we should be able to, there we go. We should be able to marquee, and you see that we get three elements here because this tag's in the way, uh, pretty annoying. So what we wanna do is remove this tag from this subset of elements to align. So again, we'll just call this, tags to align. So we want to find the ID of this tag and remove it from this subset because we don't want to move the tag to itself. It makes no sense. So what we're going to do is get the element ID of this source tag and also the element ID of the tags to align. And we're doing this in order to find out if this is equal uh, for any of these elements. And what we should get is a list saying whether there's a match. So we should get one true and two false. So there's our true and there's our two false. Um, so what we want to do is remove this case of true from our initial list of elements to align. So I'm going to use a filter by Boolean mask, uh, my favorite node. So I'm going to take my elements and I'm going to mask against this. And what we want here is our false list. We want the elements that aren't equal to uh, the, the alignment tag. So what we should be left with in our out list is our two tags to align, and then we're excluding our tag that we're already using as our alignment reference. So from there, we can move on and actually get the location of our first tag that we're using as our alignment reference. So we'll just use element location. And typically the tag location should be the origin point of where it's placed. So in this case, given it's a room tag, it's at the center of the tag. If it's a left aligned tag, right aligned tag, obviously it's different. 
uh, depending on the, the positioning method the tag has applied to it, I believe. But anyway, so that's our, that's our location uh, that we're going to use uh, in order to extrapolate our lines infinitely into space. Well, semi-infinitely. So what we're going to do now is we're going to translate this point um, away from this location in order to create our intersection line to tell our tags where to line up to. So let's just pull this location a little bit further out. And what I might do now is I want to have the option to tell the tags to align based on a horizontal or a vertical alignment rule. So what I'm going to use for this is an if node. So what I'll do here is just get an if node and I'll just get a Boolean and I'll just call this horizontal align. And we'll make this an input for Dynamo Player. So essentially this tells it it's horizontal or vertical. Um, it's a toggle essentially. So when it is a horizontal align, we're gonna, in, we're gonna extrapolate our intersection line based on the y-axis or straight up the page. And likewise, if it's vertical align, we're gonna extrapolate it in the x-axis direction. And you'll see what this does in a second, essentially. So we'll take this, we'll take our alignment rule and we'll just move this a little bit further away because we're gonna need a little bit of real estate soon. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a geometry translate node and we're going to translate in a direction by a distance. So I'm going to take my point of my location of my tag and I'm in the direction of, in this case, Y, because we're horizontally, horizontally aligning. Uh, we're going to be moving basically a really long distance away in either direction. So we need to make a little sub list. So what I'm going to do is use a syntax. I'm going to create a really big number. So I'm just going to make it uh, a million in this case. And we're in millimeters currently, keep in mind. So it's not that big. Um, it's up to you just how far you think that line needs to stretch in order to intersect with the lines that are going to stretch away from the source tags. Uh, you may want to make that number even bigger potentially. What I'm going to do is just use a little list syntax. And I'm going to say I want a variable x and then I want a variable negative x. So what that will do is allow me to feed in this number and when I run this I'll get a list with the number and the opposite number and this will let me push in both directions away. So what we're going to do now is just set our translate lacing to longest so that we move this point in the y direction away in both directions to create two new points. So I'll just change my geometry scaling under settings to extra large just because we're creating points that are quite a fair distance away. Uh, but essentially that's those two points there. What we might do just to keep things a bit more simple is we'll just bring those points a little bit closer to what we're dealing with. So I'll just do 50 meters in this case. That way at least you can more or less see what we're doing. So now you can see when we're working in the Y direction, they go this way and when we're vertically aligning, they go this way. So now you can see how that if node influences that positioning. Uh, so what we're going to do now is also do the same thing, but for our existing tags. So we're going to get an element location node again and get the location of where those nodes are currently positioned. Sorry, not those nodes, those tags. So now we have these two locations as well. But what we want to do is work in the opposite direction in this case. So if we're intersecting in the y direction for our source tag, we want to work the opposite way, so in the x direction. So we're going to get another if node. And I'm just going to invert the relationship of the x and the y axis to the true and the false results. So when this is y, this is x and vice versa, essentially. And what we can do now with that is we can keep this number here, but then we can translate these points instead. So I might actually apply this on a list map basis. So what I'm going to do is for each point or each point in this list, I'm going to translate it in both directions to create a sub list for each of those tags with uh, the two points. So what I'm going to use is a list map function. So I'm going to take this function, but essentially I want each of those points to be read as if they're entering the function at this point. So I'm going to get list map Whoop, not this create, list map. And to these points, we're going to apply this function. 
And that should essentially create that result. Interesting, we actually want to feed in the other if for our direction. For our direction, so that should turn them the other way. There we go. So now in this case, we'll really easily be able to find where this lines up with this, essentially. So what we need to do is create lines out of these now. So what we can use in this case is actually just a line best fit through points, uh, really simple. So we don't have to even worry about um, transposing our lists and getting start points and end points. And I just found this is the best method. So I can create a line by best th fit three points, which through two points is obviously gonna be just a line. And likewise, because we have sub lists of points per tag, we can just do the same thing. So essentially you can see those lines and how they sort of uh, relate now. And if we flip our alignment method, Obviously you can see that that relationship inverts. In some cases, obviously a horizontal align doesn't make sense or vice versa. Um, for, so for example, in this case, the only thing that makes sense here is a horizontal alignment. A vertical alignment makes no sense because the rooms and the tags wouldn't line up essentially. But what we wanna want, want do with these is essentially intersect them um, to find the point where that tag should be moved to. But one thing I did find you have to do here is you need to flatten these two onto a plane um, together because sometimes these elements don't actually intersect. Uh, the tag's height is interpreted differently. Um, I'm not sure exactly what influences this, but it means that sometimes those lines won't intersect right now. So what we need to use is a curve pull onto plane. And we're gonna pull, we're gonna pull this curve onto the XY plane onto the X, Y plane. And likewise, we're gonna do the same with our other curves. So in this case, we'll pull these curves and we'll just set this to a longest lacing. So it does it for all of those curves um, in order to normalize those onto the same plane so that they will definitely intersect. Because what we wanna use now is a ge geometry intersect node. This one here. And we wanna intersect this line with these lines. And again, we'll just set this to a longest lacing. And what this should give us is the points where these meet. So now you can see that's those two points there. So this allows us to use a set location node. The first thing I'll do is just flatten my list because currently it's working at a sub list level. So I just want to flatten that into my final points because for each of these points, that's the location we're going to move the respective tag to. I'm gonna use a set location node. And I'm gonna go all the way back to here. And, oh sorry, all the way back. And I'm gonna get my out list for my tag elements. And the set location node expects a geometry reference. So if you're setting the location of a wall, for example, it's a curve. In this case, it's a tag, so it's a point. So all we need to do is feed in these points here. And if I just run this right now, you'll see that it pushes my tags into alignment with this source tag. So obviously we have a really flexible script. Uh, one thing I recommend doing uh, before you actually move on to the next step is copying, actually not copying, sorry, creating a fresh select model element and not providing it with any input, holding shift and control, sorry, sh holding shift, and then just taking the name of this, setting it as an input, deleting the original node. That way there's nothing predefined in the, in the tag to align, just in case someone opens the model that this was built based on. Because this can be remembered as an element, so you do want to get rid of that, just to sort of refresh your, your inputs. Um, likewise, we'll get a select model elements. And this is the state that you should save your, your um, script in, ideally, so that it works in any project with no pre-selected elements. And there we go, tags to align. So we're pretty much ready to run the script at this point. What I might do just right at the end, now that we've got to this point, is just make this number a little bit bigger, assuming we're done testing at this point. Okay, so what I'll do is just close the script and we'll open Dynamo Player instead. And we'll run this through Dynamo Player. So what I'll do is just 
close my model just to refresh the Dynamo preview. Open up that model again, and we'll just get Dynamo Player on the side. And I believe, hmm, I wonder where I've saved my script. <laughs> Interesting. I may just have to quickly go and check where I've saved my script to, because I believe I didn't. Oh, no, there we go. It's there. I just need it to refresh. So what we need to do is go into our Inputs tab. And this is where we can keep selecting different tags for alignment reference and also reselect the tags we want to align. And essentially we can just treat this like a little bit of a plugin for a little while whilst we use it. So I'll just wait for these inputs to come up because once we have the inputs, we can pretty much go to town. So let's just say we want to vertically align to this tag. So align to this tag, tags to align, We'll select these three and it's okay if you select the one that you're using for alignment because it gets emitted using the element ID filter we set up and we'll do vertical align. Run and there you go. Um, really easy. Likewise, align to this tag. Tags to align. Run. Done. Um, so you can see how simple uh, this, this tool is to use and whilst it's not quite as intelligent as a, a plugin could be, it's obviously much easier to build. Um, so I think that there's a lot of merit in sort of teaching the logic of how these sort of scripts work using Dynamo. Um, so there we go. And obviously you can use this in Revit 2020, whereas I believe that the BIM42 plugin isn't out for Revit 2020 yet. So a um, little bit of uh, time saving there as well, if you were using this tool previously. And there you go perfectly aligned. Um, so just a handy little script that you can use for a lot of different things. And you can obviously align different types of elements that don't have to be tags. You can align chairs, tables, all sorts of things. So just be creative with how you use this uh, methodology. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, so that's pretty much it. If you've got any comments or feedback, feel free to leave it down below. Um, and hopefully uh, this is useful for you. Um, I make videos about two to three times a week. So if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so to stay updated. Um, and thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care.